Okay, so <clears throat> I've been meaning to do these for a while. I've got quite a few union repair tools and I've been using them for a while now. And I thought, what better way to do a review about them and see how I've got along with them and see if they're actually worth spending a little bit of money. So we're going to do individual ones, starting off with the Shapus Eye Crescent. Uh, I was a bit dubious about this because I've actually got this one here and there's a couple more as well that I've had in the past. I've also been using... Uh, where are my tweezers? My... I think they're called DeMont. But yeah, the DeMont tweezers or the green tweezers, excellent for cleaning. And the scalpel. So, um, I didn't know whether I was going to need these. I had seen them on another channel. Someone recommended it. What I can say is from using it, from what I have been using it, it's actually really good. Um, I've had it for over a month now and you can see the tip. I'll flick over to the microscope in a minute, but you can see the tip is pretty pristine. Um, only used this a few times, although it was pretty good. I just haven't had a use for it yet. I imagine if you did have more of these tools on the end, you could probably fit something else that you're going to use a bit more. What I will say is it only comes with this hook, which is fairly annoying because it's not always ideal to have the hook. Um, I've always found it myself like switching between these where I needed to kind of stab in, and it's difficult to stab in. You end up having to like hook, and then you're kind of losing the control that you you want to get. Also, the device is uh, the device, the the tool's pretty heavy. You know, it sits nicely in your hand, it's nice and weighted, um, seems to be quite well made. This top section up here, I've had a few of these sorts of designs where you kind of loosen these off. And this bit up here is made of some sort of, some sort of uh, metal, which is good because the ones that I've used that are plastic, these bits here tend to fray and they don't keep the unit in there. Uh, I'm guessing that anything that fits into here you'll be able to use. So for instance I've got this blade here if this fits in I imagine you could probably use that. So if we put that in there it would have helped if I actually did this right. It's a little bit thick, it's not really meant for that. But yeah, you just kind of stick that into the slot. It's got two different size slots. Hold the tip. And then once it gets so tight, you can... I mean, yeah, that's really held that tight. Yeah, I mean, that's only just in there. and Yeah, it's fairly impressive. So even just off using this again after you end up breaking that. I mean, I don't know if they've got any spares. We'll have a look on their website in a sec. But I'd certainly, you know, buy more of those. It'd be nice if it did ship with more tools. Um, as far as I can tell, I can't remember now if it shipped with more. But I know my last tools that I got, even though you don't tend to use them, but the last glue remover or whatever you got is this one here which you can see the difference. If we flip over to the microscope, where am I at? No, wrong one. I've just jigged all these around. Yeah, you can see how beat up this is just off, off that camera anyway, but we'll take a closer look. There we go. I had this all set up to a keypad here, but um, the keypad kept messing up and selecting mute, so I've just disconnected it. I've done a couple of live streams that had no sound in. Not great. So yeah, if we flick over to this, I'll just turn the light on. If we bring this down, I'll take the magnification out of it. So. So if we look here, you can see this is the original tool I was using. 
and you can see that it's quite beat up. Let's have a look. You can see there it's not great. Um, if we flick over to this one, which I've been using, so let's just get it back into its its tool. So yeah, you can see. Oh no, you can't. I don't know why my camera is messing up. I hope that's not going to come out on live stream. It seems like there's a huge delay, but you can see how pristine that is. I mean, look at that tip. It's you know it's a really well bit of good quality bit of metal. So I don't see it bending out of shape like this, and it is. If we have a look at the, the thinness, I think the other. Sh no, I mean looking at that, you, you can see that there really really similar so it does make a huge difference to the amount of uh, or the quality of the metal use I would say this one here is thinner so it's better for getting under chips and stuff and ICs but for cleaning this gets in between all of the smallest components so if we flick back if, I, if we compare that if we compare that also to the drum and tweezers Dumont you can see that they're pretty similar at the sort of tip size okay let's get a old board I'm just going to randomly pick one oh, yeah. one here that I've actually been using Okay, so if we go down and let's look around this area here. I'm not going to worry about that lagging too much. I'm hoping that it's not going to come out on live stream like that. Okay, I've got that at a decent magnification now. So you can see here size of the tip between the smallest components here but you can see that slides in easy again I would say you can see here what I mean by it's curved looking at it like this you can't get the definition of where the point is so if you've only got like a pinpoint section you're trying to get like here you just need to clear this little bit it is difficult to do that with this it's good for scraping away large sections if they introduced a pointed version of this so it was just flat and straight you'd be able to get in I mean you can see here if you tilt it at an angle but if you're in between these here that you can't really tilt at an angle so that's my only complaint it's not a huge complaint Again, if they do release something, you can just buy the add-ons. So uh, you can see here, if we just go to actually some underfill, and I'll rig this up in a board, and we'll just do a demonstration. Yeah, overall, I'm really happy with that. Uh, we'll bring it up on the website in a minute as well. I think it was about $10. So, I mean, even with shipping, you're, you're on to a winner there. Okay, let's go. Let's do some of the easier stuff around here. Up at the top, some of the stuff that you'd normally be taking apart. So I'm just going to set this to 200. And we'll, we'll do one of these with the shim, and then we'll do one how most people probably, probably use it. So you can see that it cuts through really easy. I mean this isn't the hardest of stuff to take take off. But you can see it's really effortless. Not going to be the best example because like I said it's quite easy to remove this but you can see here what I mean with the point it's just slightly more accurate when you can see the whole vision without having that curved point 
but you do mess your tweezers up. You know, these tweezers, uh, I think they cost me 38 quid a pop, and I don't really want to be messing these up like this, whereas you can see the tip of this. I've been using it for a while, and there's no damage, so if they do release that, that's going to be ideal. Let's try and find some... Okay, so this one's had a lot of heat. This is my donor board here, hence all the solder balls popping out of everywhere. Okay, let's go down the side of the processor. Now this is where this thing really comes into its own element. So if we try with this, the tweezers, you can see it's just like the tips will go in, but as far as trying to get further in there, you can't because these are like, I don't know what they're called, conical. So they're thinner at the tip than they are further on. But if we come back with this, this thing just cuts. Look at that. So this is where this thing really comes into its element for clearing around these. You can see here the, the gap. Are we actually getting that on camera? Yeah. You can see the gap here. And it just powers through it, and you can really feel it like cutting into it. So, yeah, overall, really happy with it. Um, I'm convinced you won't be disappointed, and from what I can tell, uh, iCrescent seems to make really good equipment. So, let's flick over to this play capture, get my screen key off there. So you can see here on the Union Repairs website, it's $8.90. Um, and what does it come with? They might have updated it here. No, you can see that it only actually comes with the two shims. Not the end of the world. But I would like to see it come with a few more. A few more parts, that's the same part over and over again in different angles. So if you listen in Union Repair, you know, swap out the chip removal one and put on the square. Or maybe even leave that one in there and give us, you know, two chip removal ones, a thinner one and the one that you put in. And this hook and a straight one, because I'd pay a little bit more for that. You know, I'd probably pay 10 maybe $15 for that. Maybe more, I don't know. Uh, that's going to conclude this live stream. Uh, if you like that, obviously you can go over. I'm going to leave the links to the Union Repair site uh, down in the description. So all you have to do is hit that description. You'll be able to get a link directly to it. Um, I've not been paid by Union Repair for this. This is a genuine tool review. So I'm going to do a few from there because um, people always ask questions about tools. Why, who, when, you know, what, why are they any good? And if you've got any sort of tool recommendations, you know, hand them along to us and uh, we'll test them out and if they're any good we'll stick them on the channel it's always good to sort of pass that on and make your lives a little bit easier i'm going to be back in a minute with another review of a multi-docking station and um, as always thanks for watching and we'll see you again if you're on youtube hit the like button subscribe if you're on facebook hit the like page and uh, thanks for watching